Hello Toastmasters, most welcome guests, and thank you Mr. Toastmaster. My name is Jeff Peters, and I was a member of this club for several years, and I'm now back to enjoy participating again. And today I am going to be giving a speech on getting things done. Do we have a little pen to write? Oh, here it is, yeah. So, GTD is the acronym, I'll put it up here. Anyone heard of GTD? Getting things done? Yes? What have you heard about it? There are several steps to the, there's just do it, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's many different ways, like, it has, it's a collection of ideas regarding productivity, written by an author named David Allen. And today, I'm going to present you what he calls the natural project planning process. And so you think, why do I care about this natural project planning process? Well, I claim that after listening to my speech, you will have some new ways to increase your productivity and reduce your stress. So those are things that everyone, I think, can take it to the next level. So I would first like to make some definitions and sort of background. When I talk of a project, I really want to include anything that is you, a goal that you want to accomplish that takes more than one step. So a project could be anything from, you know, like writing a marketing report where you have to do a whole bunch of different steps to research information, put it together, organize it, and produce the report. Or it could be something as simple as something around the home, like clean, uh, fixing your toilet. Like I actually had a broken toilet at home and I, th I had no idea how to fix it. I, I don't want to pay $350 for a plumber, so I was like, I have to do this myself. So my project of the day was, you know, fixing the toilet. And it turns out that the whole project, I could break it down into a sequence of steps. So for the toilet example, I first had to go home and try to find the model number on the toilet. I didn't know where it was written. I opened up the lid, I look, is there a little ceramic number there? And I found a whole bunch of numbers, so I Googled them, so I found the number. So that was the first step, I found the model number. Then I have to research, like, what are the parts? What are the parts that need to fix the toilet? And what's, what's causing this horrible rattling sound in my toilet? I need to fix that problem. So I researched the parts. Then I, once I found out the part, then I went to the Home Depot, I bought the part. Then I realized I don't have the right wrench, so I had to buy the, the little wrench to fix it. Then I actually had to spend three hours trying to get this part to fit and then go in the toilet. And then after I put the part in, I turned on the water and I checked for leaks, no leaking. Then I was like, all these sequences of steps I'm following, right? So finally, I tried the toilet, flushing it, and it flushed and it worked, right? <laughs> so then I was done, I had to clean up the bathrooms, all the mess messy things everywhere, put away the old packaging. So as you see, that was like a mini project that I accomplished. And every step of the way had a bunch of steps. So today I'm going to talk about what, how does, what's a good way to approach any kind of project, whether it's your toilet at home or it's your, your software development job at work, you're implementing a feature, or are you giving a presentation to some clients, what do you need to go through? So there's, a, there's an acronym I want to introduce to you. It's actually Doughboy. So the Doughboy, it's my own kind of way of doing it. So D-O-B-O-I. Now this is an acronym, every letter stands for something important, and I want to briefly talk about this. The first step is defining purpose and principles. So what is the purpose of what you're doing? Um, my principle is I really want to have a working bathroom, so I'd like to fix the toilet. So the BO is outcome visioning. You have to put a picture in your mind or write down what do you want the outcome to look, at, look like. For me, I wanted it to be so that when I hit the flush button, it would make a proper flushing sound, it wouldn't make a horrible rattling sound, and there would be a proper operation of the toilet, of course. <laughs> and then B is brainstorming. So brainstorming is where you just be creative and write down all the possible steps that you might have to do. Like, it might occur to you that you have to, uh, you know, install the part, but that may be the idea that you have to install the part may come to you before you think of the idea that, oh, I need to find out the model number of the toilet. So first of all, brainstorming is you don't worry about what order these things are coming. You don't worry about the sequences or the what should come after another thing. You just write down all the ideas. What are all the steps that you might possibly have to do? And once you've got all the brainstorming done, then you do the organizing. So always for organizing. So we've done Defining purpose and principles, outcome visioning, brainstorming, organizing is when you take those 
all those steps you thought of and you're going to be putting them in a sequence, figuring out what's the thing I have to do first and what are the things that are, need to happen after other things like dependencies and stuff like that. So once you've organized them, then you need to figure out what can I do now? What's the next action? So this is a really power, powerful thing to ask. What's the next action? Have you ever been at a meeting where all these people are talking about ideas and then no one really knows at the end of the meeting who's doing what or what's the outcome. It's just people have, have gotten a bit further along, but they don't know what they're doing. So important to ask the question, what is the next action? So for me, I had to ask, what's the next action? The next action is to text my partner saying, hey, Tony, can you please pick up this particular model number of a part at Home Depot? He's like, sure, I'll pick it up on my way home from work. So that was, and then I did, what's the next action of that? And so this, this kind of process, if you remember these, these five uh, acronym steps, the D-O-B-O-I steps, you'll really be able to fix any kind of problem, solve any project. And this kind of become, can be applied on a huge level with a massive project or even a personal project like I did. So a few more just notes to close, that if you're actually going to be implementing this system, it's really helpful to have a, some supports in place. So if you're using just your head for managing your project, and you say you have like 30 things you have to do, it's going to be really stressful. And, and that's a lot of people, they, they rely on their head for most of their project planning. But I recommend use a project planning system, a way to manage your tasks. And one of the ones that I use is called Toodledo. And it's like a website where you enter all your tasks. It lets you put in the, all the brainstorming, the ideas, and then dates and priorities and organize them into projects. Really helpful to do some kind of project planning. At work, I use a different software called uh, Task Unifier, which is open source and runs on your desktop, so it doesn't send anything in the cloud. That one is a really good uh, tool as well for this kind of project management. And uh, finally, there's kind of a, another thing, a really important thing I want to mention is that there's kind of three things you can be doing at any one time. If you're at work and people are always coming to your desk and say, can you fix this urgent project? You're really doing things as they show up. Another thing you can be doing, aside from that, is you can be planning. You can be thinking about the tasks, brainstorming, out-convisioning, uh, organizing. And thirdly, the thing you can do is to be actually doing the work that you planned. So I would suggest instead of just doing work as it comes up, like doing things as they get sent to you, do a bit more planning of this sort of process, of the doughboy process, and you will be on your way to achieving your goals a lot more effectively. So I hope that this gives you some ideas on how to reduce your stress and increase your productivity, and I would love to hear your feedback later on if this kind of idea will help you. Thanks.